Change orders play a significant role in Autodesk PLM 360's change management. Also known as ECOs, change orders provide real-time visibility to pending, approved, and even discarded changes inside of PLM 360. Change orders can be the result of an approved change request and they play a key role in the life cycle and revision management of bill of material items. Like other workspaces, change orders are an out-of-the-cloud configuration and can be tailored to your exact processes. The change orders workspace can be found under the change management category within PLM 360. This is grouped together with problem reports, deviation and waiver requests, change requests, and change orders. So let's go take a look inside of our change order workspace. First thing we'll do, let's go and create a new change order. Creating a new ECO inside of PLM 360 involves filling out the mandatory fields for title, for routing type, and in this routing type, this will dictate the path that the workflow takes a little bit later. The change reason code, in this case, I'll choose initial design release. And down here we have the ability to add ad hoc approvers to this ECO for the workflow approval. Click on save and let's take a look at how this looks. With a new ECO created, the next step is to add affected items to this change order. This produces a list of all of the available items and records inside of the item master within PLM 360. You can also type in and refine your search results up here if you know the prefix or the name of the item that you're looking for. As you search and sort from the items within the item and bombs workspace, you can also expand this and take a look at the where use. So we actually have a sub-assembly out here that's common to uh, both of these. So I'm going to choose these. This is a bottom-up way of creating a change order where you can go and create the change order, choose parts individually, click on next, and then add these to the change orders. Next we'll take a look at a top-down approach to change management with an item. So now with our change order having a few affected items, let's head back over to the item and bombs workspace and uh, we'll examine a different way that we can add items to a running change order. So this is change order 24, initial design release. So let's take a little bit different approach to this. Over inside of the item and bombs workspace, I've identified a sub-assembly that I'd like to add to an existing change order. Up at the top, we have a Create Relationships button. So from here, I can actually link this directly to a change order and place this on the Affected Items tab and I can quickly sort and search through all of the change orders that are running. Here's my initial design release. I'll click on Next and finally save and exit. Now by doing so, PLM 360 comes back and uh, messages to you a couple of things. First, there is a pending change column down here in the Bill of Materials. And if I hover over the pending change stamp icon, it says pending change 24 and I see that the subcomponents under this subassembly are all part of the same initial design release change number 24. And to get to that change order we have a tab up here called related changes. Going to related changes I can click on this link and it'll take me directly to that ECO. Now back inside of the ECO under the affected items tab we see that we have our three original components plus our subassembly. The next step involves going in and choosing the life cycle path that each one of these items is going to take through the ECO. There are several life cycle transitions that are available to you right out of the cloud within PLM 360. The first, initial design revision, would set the component to a numeric revision, revision 1, 2, 3, and go into a design life cycle state. The second is to bypass the design and go directly to release. In our example here, for the subcomponents that are standard parts, I'm going to set this directly to a release state. And notice that as I do so, an opportunity for setting the effectivity uh, turns on. By default, this will be on release, but I could choose the calendar option and choose a date in the future when this release actually becomes effective. For the subassembly, however, I'll go and use the initial design revision. With the item life cycles all set, next step will be to take a look at the approval workflow. Note the path that we have by default inside of the workflow. We have a fast track path pre-selected for us down here. This is directly related to, over inside of the details tab, the routing type that we selected in here. This is a predefined routing that you can set up within PLM 360. 
Under the main menu, under the reference area, we have an approval list, and we'll cover this in another administrative tutorial. You can create different routing types that dictate the path that an ECO or an ECR or other workspaces that use workflow within PLM 360 can take. To act on this, simply click on the interactive map or from the drop down at the top over, or over in the right, you can click on Submit Fast Track. The next step will be to put the final approval on. And notice as we do this, the ECO moves into a fully approved state. Finally, let's take a look at those affected items that were listed on this change order. The new revision level is now reflected in the item descriptor of each one of these items, revision one because of the initial design revision, revision A for the other three components because we went directly to a release date. There's a shortcut here if you want to get to those items. Come over and click directly on the revision to go directly to the uh, bill of material of the released assembly.